Uh, so we'll see where that takes us as we go along, but thus far the experience is very similar to Eyes Closed. Uh, we just have a lot of fun seeing the things in this room, especially since this room is full of all sorts of colorful, interesting things to look at. There's plenty to see and explore. And part of that, like when we had the brownie, whoever was here during the brownie night, when we had the brownie and we were trying to encourage you to experience your food and your brownies and all other things with more <sighs> savoring it. Yes. In essence, what we're doing visually is savoring the experience. Because for us, it's very new and interesting to have a visual through, vi through a optical visual experience. So, talk a bit here just in the beginning as we get going about where this discussion about fear goes next. Now, we've spent a lot of time talking about fear. We've talked, spent a lot of time looking at fears and understanding what fears do in your world, what they do in your life, how they affect things, where they come from, where they are in your body, where they are in your relationships. We've looked at all this. And, and the, the question could be asked, what's the point? Beyond just the becoming more conscious of what's going on, what's the point beyond the consciousness? And the point of being conscious is to bring awareness of what's going on in the moment to the moment. <laughs> it's a funny thing to say, but really, so often as we're talking about fear, we've realized that you've brought the past and the future into this moment. And we think that example we used last week was really a good one, of how the past and the future are really what the moment has been about. And moving into now, understanding fears, catching fears, transforming fears, being conscious about your fears, leaves you with what? Fear has occupied every moment of your existence. Now, if it isn't an out-and-out -out fear of some danger that you might be experiencing, it's fear of money, <laughs> or fear about what's going on with money, or fear of relationships of some capacity with your parents or your siblings or your lovers or your children. Or you, you have looked at fear of what's going to happen next. How's the future going to unfold? Are the kids going to be safe? Are they going to be happy? Uh, worries. All these sorts of anxieties have been, by us, lumped under the idea of fear. And even if you're in a moment where everything seems okay and you're not worried and you're relaxed, there's always the underlying fear of getting dead, which you cannot escape until you address. And that's what we've tried to do with you, is to show you when fear of getting dead is operating in your life so you can be conscious of it. It may not be a fear that you ever completely erase, at least not, um, not as a homo sapiens. We probably will never completely erase the fear of getting dead, but you can get into a relationship with the fear of getting dead where it alerts you. It alerts you to the places where you're still unconscious. So, you have all the tools, and you have all the ways of becoming aware of what's going on, and then you're in a moment where you say, okay, if I'm not afraid, what am I? What's left? And this is what happened to Veronica on Sunday night. And it's taken until, well, it's still going on. The, the, the resulting <clears throat> purging and the resulting transformational process has been for four days, three or four days now. It's not over. It probably won't be for another three or four days. Where you sit and you say, okay, fine, if there are no fears, or you have the experience of there being no fears because you've caught them all as they've popped up, what does life look like? And none of you know the answer to that, at least not in a continuous space or more than a brief moment. <laughs> because you have been built to be afraid. The reason you were built to be afraid, let's just review, is to keep the human body moving. You had to be afraid because you needed to keep the physical form alive. 
And as you've brought consciousness into your experience and you've been aware of where you're actually in physical danger, you've brought awareness to the idea that you're afraid 97% of the time for no good reason. 3% of the time it's something that might have something to do with something, <laughs> but you spend 97% of the time basically being afraid. And as we've whittled down, then what happens? What happens in the moment where 97% of it used to be something else? Yeah, it's a biggie. What happened for Veronica was she experienced herself in that place and panicked because it made her feel non-human or too much different than what she had been before. The difference between what she had been before and this new space was so radical that it made her feel not alone in the sense of kicked out of the tribe alone, but alone is in the sense of I'm the only one on the planet alone. That kind of a feeling of just, I don't know what to do with this. That was where she went, which we hope you see as a fear. See, that's that thing you've all talked about over the years we've been together. When just when I think fear of money is out of my life, another fear of money comes. You know, just when I think I feel balanced in my relationship, another thing comes up for us to look at, right? We've talked about peeling the onion. Just when you think, oh my goodness, I think I really get this fear thing, then the body pulls from deep out of its cells the ultimate fear, past the fear of getting dead, is the fear of questioning your existence. The question of, who am I has no frame of reference. So, needless to say, an emergency call to Marvin was placed. <laughs> and it, it's, it's working its way through. We immediately told her, do nothing but lie on the couch because you're going to crash. Physically, you're going to crash. It took two days. We were off on the timing. We were off and off on timing. So that's okay. But today, she didn't wake up till 11.30 and she slept the rest of the day and she barely managed to get her shit together enough to come here tonight because it was just this day felt very strange. But the, the reason we're sharing that with you is because we expect that this is not an isolated incident. And we also expect that it may show up uniquely for each of you. Now, it is clear to us that the way it showed up with, for Veronica is, a, it corresponds to her core emotion. So there may be a corresponding to your core emotion, or it may show up similar to the way it showed up for Veronica. We really can't predict because this has never occurred before. But we wanted to share this story with you so that you're aware that as you take that 97% of fears that aren't useful, and you start removing them by catching them, seeing them come up. There is a void that is left. And that void is your new way of life. And that new way of life is going to feel very different. Because you're changing. You're going from homo sapiens, which is a fear-based statement, so stata, state, fear-based state, into homo spiritus, which is a consciousness-based state. So that means you're actually coming at being in physical form from a completely new paradigm. And as you come at physical form from a completely new paradigm, things have to be different. Yes. <laughs> we hear you go, <sighs> it's okay to breathe. We don't know exactly how it's going to show up, but we imagine we'll be talking about it in the coming weeks. So we wanted to give you a heads up. And as you let go, let go, let go, let go of fear occupying your day. It's really what goes on is fear occupies your day. And as you let go of fear occupying your day, something else has to come in. Now.